Hi, I'm Paul from the Studio Rats. I've had a couple of requests in to show how I actually record the spark in the video. So what I'm gonna to do today is just to explain how I do that and also what we're gonna do is to record four guitar parts in a song using the spark just to see how well it fares against the traditional way that I normally record, which is by using valve amps. First of all, what I'm gonna do is to explain how to record using the Spark. Now, there's two different ways you can do this. You can either use USB, so you take USB out the back of the Spark, plug it into your computer and use that as a recording interface. Now that works really well, but the only problem that I found with doing it that way is that all the effects are actually mono. I can't get any stereo effects. The way that I do it is to plug a mini jack into the Spark's headphone output and to take a splitter lead, which is two mono jack leads and plug that into my recording interface. That way you get the pseudo stereo reverb effect that the Spark has. If you do plug a mini jack into your headphone output on the Spark, you need to make sure that the output is turned down a little bit because you don't want the headphone, which is technically a mini power amp, driving into the front of your interface. You need to make sure that you turn it down as you don't want to damage your interface. So what I'm going to do today is to load up a song and to record four guitar parts and to see how well they perform in the track. Now I've saved all of these tones to the tone cloud and you can find them under falling guitar one, two, three, and four. And the hashtag is the studio rat. So that's without any spaces. So T H E S T U D I O R A T S. So if you want to load up those sounds to have a look at the sounds that I'm actually using to record these guitar parts, you can do that. Right, let's get to it. The first guitar sound sounds like this. <laughs> So it's quite a heavy sort of fuzz sort of tone. There's not a lot of definition, but we want these sounds to be quite gnarly. So that is why we're going for this particular sound. Okay, let's go for the recording. The second guitar sound, we've gone with this orange amp. Now, this is where I struggled to get the right sort of sound because the sound that I used for the original recording was an amp that was driven quite hard, but it was a natural sounding amp. Now, for some reason, the amps on the Spark do sound a little bit scooped. There's a lot of bass, there's a lot of treble, but the mid control for me doesn't seem to react like a normal amp, but that's fine. I mean, you know, it sounds great. So. We've got to try and find a way of getting around that. So maybe in post when I'm mixing, I might have to boost the mids a little bit. So it sounds like this. So again, it's quite a gnarly sound. So let's go for the recording. So I'm looking at the third guitar part, which is like a little lead line that goes over the top of the rhythm parts. Now, when I recorded these parts, I used a quite a wide stereo delay. Now, this is something that the Spark doesn't do. So I've had to add a stereo delay on my DAW. And at the moment I'm using Luna, which is a universal audio DAW. So it's the inbuilt delay that comes with that. So I'm trying not to cheat as much as possible. It sounds like this. <laughs> So let's go for the recording. And 
Now we're looking at the fourth and the final guitar part that we're gonna be laying down with the spark. Now, as I'm laying down all these guitar parts, the sounds, because we're using the spark, the sounds are becoming quite mushy. Now, a lot more mushy than I would normally be recording because I'd be using different amplifiers, different speakers, or different load boxes, that sort of stuff. So the sounds have more definition. Now, with the spark, because, as I said before, it is quite mid-scooped, what we've got, we've got lots of bass, lots of treble, which sounds great on its own, it sounds great through the little speakers, but in a recording, it's starting to lose the definition that you need from that mid-frequency. Now, we can change this, we can add some more mids in post, as I said earlier, so that's what I'm gonna be doing. The sound that I've gone for with this fourth guitar part is the Insane Amp. Now, with the Insane Amp, Again, you still got that scoop sound, but I've added a delay to it just to give it some extra space. It sounds like this. So you can hear the delays repeating. Now this is gonna be an octave guitar part. It's supposed to sit away from the other guitar. So let's see how that works. So do you think it can hold up in a recording? Let me know in the comments below. And also, if you got something out of this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and click on that bell button and you'll be notified of any future video that comes out from the Studio Rats. I'm Paul and I'll see you next time. Cheers.